Hey, what is up everybody? This is Rob. And today we're actually going to be talking about some developing news in the car community. I mean, some people said it's developing. We kind of already knew this. But Toyota has recently confirmed that the 2026 Supra will probably be the last year of the Supra. And they don't have plans to keep on going into a new Supra. What would essentially be a Mark VI Toyota Supra as right now we are on the Mark V. So I just wanted to get some of my thoughts on this, especially as a previous Supra owner. If you guys didn't know, maybe you start following me for my Tacoma content. I actually used to have a pretty clean 2021 A91 edition Toyota Super in Refraction Blue. So, of course, I do also keep up to date with the Super community just to see what's been going on with the platform. So I just want to give a little bit of my insight to this. But also, I want to answer a burning question everyone has, which is, are the Mark V Toyota Supers going to be gold mines in the future? Well, here are my thoughts on that. So for the Supra, as you may already know by now, it was a joint venture between BMW and Toyota. Essentially what happened was BMW wanted access to Toyota's research and technology in regards to their hydrogen platforms. If you did not know, I actually used to also own a Toyota Mirai, which was a hydrogen car. I do have a video review of that as well. Now in response, Toyota said, all right, let us use your Z4 platform then because we want to revive the Supra and that seems like the perfect candidate. Now, yes, of course, there is always a whole bunch of controversy over if this was a good idea or not. For example, the Z4 is a two-seater. Supers were historically not two-seaters. That's just the way it goes. I didn't mind it at all. But you'll still get some, you know, really dire Toyota people who are saying if it's not a pure Toyota, then it's not worth your time. But I'm not really here to discuss that. So everything went fine and dandy. This all started back in 2019 when production of the Super happened. And it's still being made. Of course, in 2026 now, BMW said that they will be discontinuing the Z4, which of course then leads everyone to ask, well, what does this mean for the Supra? And then Toyota says, well, we have said from the get-go, this was gonna be a one and done thing. You know, one generation of the Supra. That's it. And they actually made this pretty clear right at the start. So that's why for me, as someone who is like a Supra owner, I'm not too surprised because I had been following it from the get-go. I had a feeling they wouldn't change their mind all of a sudden. And that's just the way it goes. But it's just really funny to see all these people panicking about it. And the super community, of course, they're obviously frothing at the mouth because when you say discontinue nowadays, people automatically think my price is about to go up a lot on my own vehicle. That's just how it always is. Every single car that's out there, every sports car, as soon as everybody thinks, oh, it's going to be discontinued, the first thing all owners think is, my car's going to be worth five times as much in five years. It's more often the case that that's not it. So I want to talk about why I, I really don't think that, you know, the Mark V Super is going to be, you know, this gold mine, you know, which most likely is because everyone looked at the Mark IV Supers and thinks Lightning's going to hit twice. But, you know, I want to talk about that. Fun fact, if you guys didn't know, my first car was actually a Mark III Toyota Supra. I had bought it back in 2007. It was a five-speed non-turbo, but I did buy it from the original owner and it was garage its whole life. It only had 57,000 miles and I paid the equivalent today to about $7,200. That was an awesome car. You know, getting that car really got me into sort of the whole super spirit. I really wanted a Mark IV Toyota Supra after that, but by then they were already still kind of going up there in price. Now, why? What makes the Mark IV so special and why I don't think the Mark V is going to be able to achieve that same status? For one, the engine, mainly the exclusivity. Here in North America, it's very hard to get the 2JZ twin turbo. The only way to do that is to find a Mark IV Supra. They don't sell any other cars that already come with the 2JZ twin turbo. Yes, you could buy an NA 2JZ car such as the IS300 and you could throw a turbo on there. You'll have to do a little bit more work though to make sure everything is running smoothly. And then when you get into transmission, you have to worry about that as well, as if you got the 2JZ twin turbo Supra, then you were able to get the V166 speed transmission, which could also handle a decent amount of power before you have to start taking things apart, all right? And then you compare it, we do have the Mark V Toyota Supra with the really nice B58 engine. Now, again, it's a really nice motor. It, handles power very well. You could upgrade it pretty easily. I mean, I remember I was looking into an E50 tune on it and it would have given me a good amount of power for not a lot of cost. And it still was safe, pretty good and drivable. However, that's not the only way to get B58, all right? 
I can go to a BMW dealership right now and throw a rock in the air and there's a two out of three chance it's going to hit a car with a B58 in it. Now, not having the exclusivity, I do think that's what's, that is going to hurt the value of the Mark V in the future just a little bit. One of the best ways to make sure your car can handle the test of time is to make sure it's in an iconic movie series or TV series. As we all know, the Mark IV Toyota Supra was in the Fast and the Furious, which did make it very popular. I mean, for a lot of people that are especially around my age, the Fast and the Furious movies were our first real foray into the car culture and just seeing really cool stuff involving cars. I remember seeing the first Fast and the Furious movie and seeing that Supra, and it was awesome. And I just thinking, I want that car. I want the bright orange Supra. That thing is so cool. Now, the Mark V Toyota Supra, it just, it just hasn't hit that status. I mean, there was a Mark V Supra in, I believe it was Fast 9, but it really wasn't, uh, it wasn't really a memorable moment. You know, when vehicles are able to kind of cement themselves in a pop culture, that also helps their values. The part of the reason Mark IV Supra has its value is also because it's considered one of Toyota's last great sports cars. When they say Toyota's last great, they mean one of Toyota's pure Toyota sports cars, all right? Now, again, I'm not here to disparage it. I do see why they did the BMW partnership. You know, for example, they sold about 25,000 Supras since they started making the Mark Vs. Now, the Mark V Supra was always supposed to be a low volume car model. Again, they sold 25,000 since 2019. They sold 30,000 Camrys in the month of March alone. Okay, it makes perfect sense why Toyota didn't want to put all this money in R&D into building up the Supra just for them to not sell a lot of it and not, you know, really get much of their money back. You know, it makes perfect sense in my opinion. However, this will be a bit of a stain on his legacy as while well, it is an awesome driver's car, some people might not really look too favorable on that in terms of it being a collector's car because, again, while I had the Super Moniker, it's not a pure Toyota product. I just don't think it's going to be as well received into the, uh, you know, quote unquote fictional, you know, legendary car wall. You know what I mean? But, you know, please let me know what you guys think about that. So this last little thing for me, this is a little bit of a hypothesis for me, mainly from what I've seen. So part of the reason why the Mark IV Supra's value is also so high is because there just aren't a lot of clean examples left. You know, of course, uh, you know, the last Supras were made at, for Japan 2001, 2002 in the US 1998. It's been a quite a bit of time since then. A lot of them have been crashed up. They've been driven till the wheels fallen off, you know, whichever. But for the Mark V, when you go into the groups, you're already hearing people who they've only had this car for a year or two and they're like, oh, I'm gonna, I can't wait to store it. And I'm only putting like a thousand miles a year on it, blah, 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 because you know, they got a freaking gold mine. You know, they're gonna be able to sell this thing for $200,000 in 10 years. Now, something that I noticed a lot with, collector, with collectibles, as this is from somebody who likes to collect things is, the more people who buy stuff with the idea it's gonna be a future collectible, often that can mean the less of value it's gonna be. Think about how you hear about how, you know, all these comic books from, you know, way back, the first Superman comic, for example, were of all this money, right? Because there aren't a lot of them left. But then you see people buying modern comic books today and automatically getting them slabbed and stored. And there's probably, you know, tens of thousands of all these comic books sitting around that people think, oh, it's gonna be more valuable one day, when the reality is in 20 years, there's still gonna be tens of thousands of them left because everyone's been storing them. I think we might get a little bit of that with the Supras. You know, in 20 years, we're gonna see like all these people with Supras, with these super low miles trying to sell them, you know, trying to sell their Mark Vies for all these rid ridiculous amount. When it's like, well, there's kind of a lot to choose from because everybody felt like they had to save them. That's just a little hypothesis I have. That might also factor into it. Just think of it as a little bonus thing, something that I've kind of been thinking about. And there you have it, guys. That's just what I think about one, uh, you know, Toyota discontinuing the 2026 Supra. I just, not a surprise. Definitely not at all. And two, you know, why I really don't think his value is going to go up a whole lot compared to Mark IV's. And also, guys, if you're buying a car as an investment, please don't. You can usually get way better gains if you just put that cash into the S&P 500 than if you try to buy a car and hold on to it for 25 years. It actually wasn't until maybe a few years ago where you really like 
making a good investment on if you had a low mileage Mark IV. And even then, it's like you had to have bought this Mark IV and kept it stored for like 20 years and kept the upkeep going on it for 20 years to make sure that, you know, the engine's not just a big pile of sludge in there from not moving for so long, keeping everything going. And who knows how much that also costs before they were finally able to turn somewhat of a profit from the price they paid for it brand new. I mean, it's really, I think about that. So please keep that in mind. But again, though, I'm not disparaging the Mark V. I think it's an amazing car. I recommend buying one. It's a lot of fun. I do miss mine. You know, it was pretty cool. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, I just, I just don't see it hitting those Mark IV levels in terms of value. That's just me, guys. Please let me know what you guys think. With that, guys, this is Rob, and have a good one.